Happy Monday, Locked On Women's Basketball fans. Are you going back to work after a great weekend celebrating the 4th of July? Welcome back. You missed a lot in the WNBA women's basketball space. And in this episode, not only are we going to talk about everything that happened over the weekend and all the hot topics, we're also going to be discussing one of the most important days in women's basketball history that happened 10 years ago today. I'm Gigi Spear, and Locked On Women's Basketball starts right now. You are Locked On Women's Basketball, your daily podcast on women's basketball. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much for making Locked On Women's Basketball not only your first listen of the day, but hey, your first listen of the week. It's me. I'm here with you on a Monday now for the very first time. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more as playoffs wind down. The sports stop sporting like we want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone, every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. We got that out of the way. What we need to dive into and what I know everybody wants is an update. So the last time you listened to Lockdown Women's Basketball, things might have been different. On Saturday, the Liberty lost to the Fever, 78 to 83. And I want to take a moment here to talk about this loss and how much it really doesn't matter. The Liberty are doing well for themselves, okay? And the Fever are figuring things out. Congrats to Caitlin Clark, triple-double, making history as a rookie. And we're going to get into more history by WNBA rookies in maybe two and a half minutes, so stay with me. Um, I think it was just so funny that the Sabrina Ionescu clip in the press conference where she was saying, this is our – this is a game. This is their Super Bowl, though. So, meaning the Fever lost to them twice and now beat them. So, it's kind of a big deal. So, I just kind of want to address that right now and be like, it doesn't really matter. Because I know we posted a video at the next that got a lot of comments. Thank you, everybody, for commenting. I'm happy my work's getting shared. But um, And check out the next hoops on Instagram, TikTok, and our Lockdown Women's Basketball page for shorts. I'm posting all the time. And it was just so funny to me that the Sabrina Ionescu clip blew up because she's really not being a hater. So I want to stop and just say that right there because that's true. So that was Saturday. Also Saturday, the Lynx beat the Mystics 74 to 67. And I want to get into some history over the weekend after I give you the rest of the updates. The Sun beat the Dream, toppled them 80 to 67. The Sun are back on their horse. The Aces, in what was way more of a tough game than I think the score reflects, beat the Wings 104 to 85. Some scrappy moments there. Also, some history being made. The Storm beat the Sky again, historic game that I'm going to get into 84 to 71. Then the Mercury, who are going to have to be a topic of conversation throughout this entire podcast because in segment two, I'm going to be turning down, turning back the clock a little bit, guys. And so stay with me because 10 years ago today, something very important in the WNBA world happened. And I can't wait to talk about it with you. Listen, there's no games tonight. It's Monday. Enjoy your day. But the Lynx will be at the Sparks tomorrow night on Tuesday. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Now let's get into some of the milestones that happened over the weekend. I feel like I can't really do any podcast on here without giving Asia Wilson some love. She's now the franchise leading scorer. So because of her 28 points in that 104-85 win I was just telling you about, she is now up to 4,301 points. So she passed Sophia Young Malcolm, who had 4,300. Not only did she have 28 points, and if you're watching this game, if you're like me, sadly, we're kind of used to Asia, even though she surprises me, and I'm in awe of her every time. I'm used to her in a way where Asia scores and show ups, shows up And you don't even realize it sometimes. She has her emphatic plays. She has her blocks. She has her assists. She obviously has her rebounds and her points. 
but a quiet seemingly 28 and 11. And I think that just points to how good the aces are in general, by the way. So that was her 11th double double of the season. And you know what's so funny is she was a couple points away and she said this after the game. Sid Colson, the one and only who's been on this podcast, told her to lock in and pass the record at home. And if you're watching, this Vegas crowd is going crazy. And I think that's one of the best things to watch at Las Vegas Aces games. Not only the basketball that's being played, but the level of fandom at the games is so impressive. So young Malcolm also came out on the court to congratulate Asia Wilson. And she was a part of the Aces organization when they were the San Antonio Silver Stars. So that was before 2017, the relocation to Las Vegas. Um, and young Malcolm had played from 2006 to 2015. This is in the wheelhouse of the history that we're going to get into in segment two. So stay tuned. Also, the history on the court is Odyssey Sims. If you don't know Odyssey Sims, you don't know women's basketball. And I'm sorry if that's calling you out, but it's true. Tune into Odyssey Sims. She had her little scuffle with Kate Martin. I thought that was fun to watch, but Odyssey Sims dropped a season high 25 points for the Wings. Um, and they're now five and 17. They're tied for the worst record in the league with the Mystics, but Odyssey Sims was on the all rookie team in 2014. And I cannot wait to tell you guys more about that year. Chicago Sky, the other hot topic I want to address in their press conference, just go watch it and um, tell me what you thought of Teaspoon's reaction and what was going on in this press conference, guys. Basically, there was someone, they didn't mute their mic. We've all been there, but we haven't all been there in a press conference. That can't happen. Check it out. It's actually pretty funny. Angel Reese, though, 13th consecutive double-double. History made for her. She had 17 points and 14 rebounds. Wow. In their 84 to 71 loss. She also added four steals. Let it be known. And you know what's funny is, and I keep saying that, but it's just there's so many moments throughout this weekend that I think are so important. She notches this history. Last week, she had passed CP3, Candace Parker, with 10 double-doubles in 20 career games in her rookie year. Parker was 29 and in her eighth season when she made that happen. So this is what Reese had to say, quote, I try to take some things from her game and add them to mine. Just being able to be named with an amazing player like that just always is going to be special to me, end quote. So shout out to Angel, shout out to the sky, shout out to the storm for the wind though. Now, let's talk about Miss Natasha Cloud and the Connecticut Sun to wrap this up of the present moment. And then we're going to backtrack 10 years ago. No Diana Taurasi, no Beck Allen, Kalia Copper and Natasha Cloud. I think Tosh called it their filliness. They showed off. They win 84 to 78. Cloud, 31 points, 10 for 16 from the field. Double double. Copper, double double, with 25 points and 10 rebounds. History, filliness made. That's a career high for Tosh. Connecticut's on. Let's just talk about Dewana Bonner. She's tall but she can shoot seven of nine from three single game career high from Ms. Bonner and Connecticut has now won three in a row. Also from this weekend, the Dijonet block, you just go back and watch it. She swatted that thing. And she said, sometimes I got to go back and watch it. So guys, that is the end of all the hot topics of WNBA right now. There's so much to put into, but I got to squeeze it into nine minutes. And that was, that was me doing that. So after this, we're going to get into the history that was made 10 years ago today, 2014, for those who can't really do that math at home. And then in the final segment, I'm going to get into some future projections too. So stay tuned. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. So I want you to all check out FanDuel because guess what? I love sports. I love them so much. I actually never want them to stop. And I'm sad that the WNBA is not happening tonight, but baseball is. Playoffs wind down. We get fewer games and the sports aren't sporting like I want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up any bets I'm in the mood for. 
in this summer. FanDuel is hoping, hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. For me today, I'm going to have to tune back into my roots as a softball player. I'm going to be watching the Braves Diamondback game and I, I, I got a good feeling about Chris Sale. So check that, check that game out too, because it's fun to watch. Head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Welcome back to Locked On Women's Basketball. Guys, we have so much history to get into. Let me get this ad out of here. I am Gigi Spear, and I'm so happy to have you back. And I know, stay with me. You thought the ads were over. I just have one more, and then we're going to get into the history. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on the YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Okay, welcome back. Seriously, seriously, welcome back. So happy to have you. On this day in WNBA history, I'm just going to get right into it. The WNBA All-Star starters for the 2014 All-Star game were announced. And I'm going to get into why this was just so important. First off, Michael Cooper was the East coach. And then a familiar name in the Western Conference was Cheryl Reeve. Here are the starters for the East. Let me know if you recognize these names. Elena Delanon, Angel McCautry. Tamika Catchings, recognize Sean Schimmel and Cappy Pondexer. The reserves, Jessica Ireland, Tina Charles, Janae Gumake, Erica D'Souza, who became a starter after Deladon got hurt, whatever. We all, we know the story. Erica became a starter. Katie Douglas, Brianna Jane Ray. In the West, Maya Moore, Candace Parker, Brittany Griner, Diana Taurasi, Skylar Diggins Smith. Recognize those? I do too. Reserves Candace Dupree, Glory Johnson, Neko Gumake, Simone Augustus, Lindsay Whalen, Danielle Robinson. Del Don gets Lyme's disease, so she's replaced. Augustus got bursitis in her left knee, good old bursitis, so Sue Bird replaced her. And this was historic for a couple of reasons. First of all, the East won by one point in overtime, the first ever WNBA All-Star game overtime. And here's the breakdown by quarter, 27 to 28, 30 to 25 in the second, in the third, 28 to 33, in the fourth, 27 to 26, OT, 12 to 13, 13 to 12, excuse me. Now let's talk about the milestones in points. Schimmel, 29 points, eight assists. I would love to get more into her and, and her story in a different episode. Um, pretty tragic. So if you know, you know. If not, we're going to move on. Tamika Catchings, 13 rebounds. Super impressive. Tamika Catchings, by the way, tied with Tina Thompson for the most selections with his ninth, ninth all-time. Most all-star appearances with eight. And Tamika Catchings actually just got passed over the weekend by Miss Tina Charles. So it's just so impressive. And she's one of those names where at the Commissioner's Cup, I actually had a special moment with her and I got to tell her how great I think she's doing on the broadcast. And I had I actually tried to play it pretty cool. So I didn't really get to the whole history of her as a player, too. Um, but super nice woman, in addition to being a historic, historical figure. So it was the first All-Star game to go vi uh, to go overtime viral. I don't think that exists yet. The previous All-Star record for points scored was 23 by Miss Candace Parker, who we mentioned before. Three players broke that. Shoney with 29. Diggin Smith, 27. Maya Moore, 24 points. Not scan to Brittany Griner. Still playing. And if you haven't checked out the Phoenix Mercury Instagram videos of her team impersonating her, please go check it out there's some gas released. So a little hint. She had 17 points in the game. She also dunked. 
the third dunk in All-Star Game history. Now, the other history I want to get into, and this is going to lead us into the third segment, which is more future projections, is the ratings. So in 2014, there were 34 games played, 12 teams, total attendance was 1 million, about 1.5 million. Let's just say that because it's too big of a number for me to read and you to listen to right now, which I'm so happy you're listening, by the way. Average attendance, just over 7,500. The All-Star Game itself had 475,000 viewers on ESPN, and this was a Saturday afternoon game. So it was down 50% in ratings and 40% in viewership from last year. The year before that, it was on ABC, um, and they had 791,000 viewers. Down 40 and 37% from the 2011 game, also on ABC. And the best places to watch, the most views, were Louisville, Greensboro, and the top market with a 1.5 rating, those two, followed by Memphis and Birmingham, Alabama, and then also Norfolk, Virginia. At the game, 14,000 in attendance. So I talked a little bit about the whole season, the ratings, and just more in the 2014 season. Top pick was today, going to the Connecticut Sun. My, how things go by and how she's also using her voice on a wonderful platform. The season MVP was Maya Moore. The Eastern Conference champions were the Chicago Sky with the runners up being the Indiana Fever. Fever. Western Conference champions were... The Mercury and the runners-up were the Lynx. The finals champions were the Phoenix Mercury, who beat the Chicago Sky. DT gets finals MVP. So more on the 2014 season. And I know I just read out a lot of numbers, but there's a couple I want you to keep in mind. 1.5 million total attendance. Average attendance, 7,500. And this is from May 16th to September 12th. In the final segment, I'm going to do some future projections. And to do that, I'm going to need to be bolstered from the 2023 season, which is one of the historic, historic seasons of all time. So I just mentioned there were so many momentous things that happened in this 2014 All-Star Game and in this 2014 season in general couple names you definitely recognize, um, some you might have forgotten about. But either way, in segment three, we're going to talk about future projections. So we did the present, we did the past, and now it's going to be time for the future. So stay with me for this. More after this break. Okay, so this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. I compare my life to others, let's just say it. Sometimes we all do it. And, you know, sometimes in a world, especially for me, I'm posting on social media for the next hoops, check us out, an ad within an ad. Um, sometimes social media can make things worse, right? Comparison is a thief of joy, though, and it's easy to envy other people's lives. It might look like they have it all together on their Instagram, but in reality, they probably don't. They really don't. Therapy can help you focus on what you want instead of what others have, so you can start living your best life. I've definitely benefited from therapy, and it's helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Stop comparing and start focusing with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnNBA today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOnNBA. Everybody, one more before we go. I have one last segment, and then I want you guys to get on with your week and really enjoy this one. You know, you deserve it. I'm Gigi Beer. You're back here, and you're here for future projections. So before the break, just as a refresher, first of all, segment one, we went over all the hot topics, and there's so many names that you recognize, Asia Wilson, Natasha Cloud, Angel Reese, Odyssey Sims, Candace Parker, 
Brittany Griner, the Wanna Bonner. Then in segment two, I talk more about the WNBA All-Star starters being announced and the significance of that All-Star game that was played on July 19th, 2014. And I told you to remember a couple numbers. So pop quiz, what are those? How many were in attendance that entire 2014 season? 1.5 million. At the game, the All-Star game, 14,000 in attendance. Viewership, 475,000 viewers on ESPN. Now let's get into 2023. First off, just with the All-Star game. So if you remember, it's Team Stewart versus Team Wilson. Who won? Team Stewart, 143 to 127. This was July 15th. We're coming up on our All-Star game for 2024 pretty soon. The MVP was Jewel Lloyd. The attendance was 9,472. So a little bit lower than 2014. It was aired on ABC. And it was the most watched WNBA All-Star game in 16 years. Averaging 850,000 viewers with a peak of 950,000 viewers. So in attendance, like I mentioned, 9,472. How about the rest of the year? 2023 season. So it's May 19th to September 10th. 40 games. Total attendance, 1.5 million. Average attendance, just over 6,600. Wow. We talk about growth of the game. Are these numbers reflected in attendance? Not necessarily for the 2023 season. We did see that that Aces game had, what, 20,000 people in attendance. So that was a single season record. And if you're like me, you like to go to the games. I love to go to the games personally. I love it. So when I'm there, it's such a different environment where it feels like every game is sold out. So to me, seeing these numbers, I was a little shocked. Now for my future projections. This year's All-Star Game, the tickets are going for about $200. And that's in Section 211, for example. And it's going to be in Phoenix. My prediction is not only are the attendance numbers for this WNBA season, they're going to skyrocket. They are already skyrocketed. And guess what? 2024 is very important. This is an Olympic year. Not only does the Olympics historically raise the platform and the presence of women's sports worldwide, the Olympics also do something special for the WNBA. They split the season. So yes, there's usually an all-star break, but is there usually a month-long break? No. Where players can either represent their country in the five on five or three on three, whatever. They can see their family. They can rest. They can grind. They can play pickup with each other. They can watch old film. Coaches can do the same thing. Splitting up the season is only great for the WNBA. Think of how much it helps the players themselves. Think of how much it helps the coaches. Think of how gritty the teams are getting because they know they only have less than two weeks together until, and I know it's a jam-packed schedule, travels rough and everything. These teams have less than two weeks before they say, ta-ta, goodbye. Actually, they have about 10 days. So we're seeing some of the best basketball scene. You heard me mention all these accolades, Asia Wilson, franchise leading score, Odyssey Sims, season high, rookie numbers from Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark, Natasha Cloud going off, Dewana Bonner going off. These are some of the best numbers because 
in small part due to the intensity around this season being split into two. And you got to believe that the Olympics raised the platform of women's sports historically. So after the Olympic break, what comes next? More of the regular season and then playoffs and then things ratchet up even more. So my prediction, my future predictions, and I truly mean this, not only are the total attendance numbers going to be absolutely busted, if you do the math on it, 1.5 million people in attendance for an entire season, that's 40 games. That's 37,000 people a game. That's a lot of people for WNBA. That's a lot of people, period. Now, for WNBA game, we're seeing numbers go up and up and up and up more and more. And then we could take into account playoffs on its own. But I just think it was great on this Monday to sit here and pause and say, hello, happy Monday. We have a lot of work to do. We did a check-in 10 years ago. We did a present-day check-in. And my future projection is total attendance is going to skyrocket. And I got to believe that the 850,000 average viewers, by the way, it peaked at 955,000 viewers. I think we're going to break a million this year. I think we are going to break a million this year. So stay tuned for that. Guys, this is Locked On Women's Basketball. Before I go and I say goodbye, I want to thank you all for listening, for consistently tuning in. I love that anywhere I go, women's basketball is being talked about. And that's the point of this podcast. So thank you, dear listener, for listening. And stay tuned for some great guests. Hint, Phoenix Mercury. I'm Gigi Spear. This is Locked On Women's Basketball. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest story stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Goodbye.